what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest dirt face drum official build and this particular build has two separate versions one is MIUI vendor based version and the other one is the OSS vendor based version now you might be wondering what's the difference of course for the MIUI vendor based version you have to flash the MIUI firmware vendor then flash the ROM and then just reboot if you want to flash the MIUI vendor based version but the OSS vendor based version does not actually need the MIUI vendor or firmware but that is based on open source vendor that is included in the OSS vendor based ROM of course you don't need to flash any kind of vendor separately for the OSS vendor based variant again but I have personally went with the MIUI vendor based version as always when I have the option I will definitely go with the MIUI vendor based version in most cases and here I did the same thing because the MIUI vendor based version has the ANX camera version 204 built in and that is just amazing for me and the ANX camera over here is almost stable enough to daily drive with and here you can see more kind of changes and stuff and of course for the MIUI vendor based version you need to flash the vendor depending on your region I'll link them in the description do not worry now let me show you the about section I have been using the ROM by the way for a long time now it has almost been 20 days I guess that I have been using this ROM and this particular build is the 9th February or 10th February 2022 build and this is the Durfist version 12 official Xeon and the Android platform is of course Android 12. Here you can see the change logs and stuff and the maintainer's name is Brick of course and the security patch here is latest of February 5th 2022 and the stock kernel here is the 4.14.180 kernel here it shows. SLNX status also shows as enforcing and on the top of Android version of course you can see the Durfist logo right there. Inside system panel this is how it looks like it has a system updated you can check for updates as this is the official build I think yes you can check for updates from here if you want to also there is a gesture and keys and there you will find a lot of gestures and here if you go into the gesture navigation we have this gesture navigation settings and if you go into the settings of it we have the swipe to invoke assistant that actually works fine let me actually show you that in the time being and as you can see it does work and here we have the amount of screen height to be used as the touchable back gesture area and we have the haptic feedback and the full screen gesture controls then we have the pill length and the pill radius customization so if you want to have the pill bar thickness to increase here as you can see right now the pill bar thickness has been increased so you can choose all of these customizations from right here in the system settings and the advanced gestures we have the extended swipe actions you can have the vertical left right or the long swipe left right options two button and three button navigations are also there we have the one-handed mode and you can customize that too if you want to and as you can see this is of course working flawlessly and again if you want to flash this ROM on your device you can watch the guide from the description and that will help you to actually clean flash any ROM on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and here we have the double tap to check phone the double tap to sleep adaptive playback the swipe quick screenshot everything works fine let me actually show you from here the swipe rig screenshot is perfectly working we have the capture more option too over here so if you click on that let me actually do that and press on capture more and as you can see right here you can capture more stuff like this and if you press on edit then it somehow four stops for some reason but sometimes i have seen it working let me just go into the edit section and right now if i select markup as always right now as you can see the editing is perfectly working and you can like draw something if you want to so yeah this is working perfectly fine let me go back we have the quickly open camera then the playback control volume wake option is there then we have the swap volume rocker option disable power menu on lock screen then the enable advanced restart is also there quick torch option is also there it is working fine i've seen it and the hold for assistant is again there let me go back from here we have the language and input and the gboard here is the default keyboard of course and let me talk about the home screen first this is how it looks like to the left of the home screen we get the google's discover page it looks beautiful but let me show you which launcher is this we have this darp launcher right here as the default launcher and on this particular launcher we have a lot of customizations hide pistol bar lock layout etc options the suggestions you can also disable that i am liking over here notification dots and stuff you can enable and we have the icon size etc but then we also have this double tap gesture which actually locks the device whenever you double tap on a blank area on the screen but also we have the hidden and protected apps and for this you have to tap the fingerprint scanner you can lock particular apps with this particular option so if i lock chrome let me actually right now show you if i open chrome right now it is asking me for the fingerprint scanner or the pin so if i tap the fingerprint scanner it opens the google chrome this is very convenient that 
the app lock functionality is already there in this particular launcher so that is great for android 12 this is something new and i have been totally liking this launcher and it also has the double tap to sleep anywhere in the screen for that let me just enable the always on display and here right now if i double tap as you can see this is how the always on display looks like and yeah it is working perfectly fine i would say let me try one more time okay so for some reason i am not seeing the bigger clock but of course in the always on display the bigger clock do appear but yeah most of the times the always on display bigger clock does appear and right now as you can see if you are noticing the fingerprint scanner speed and the animations and stuff yes it does work flawlessly no issues with the fingerprint scanner at all over here i would say 100 percent of the time the fingerprint scanner works perfectly fine no issues whatsoever and in the power menu this is how it looks like we have the advanced reboot and stuff over here you can really reboot to the recovery if you want to also talking about the quick setting panel this is how it looks like we have the wi-fi and the mobile data and stuff and the stuff i have added let me show you it has the qualcomm aptx hd audio supported so yeah no issues with the bluetooth devices the sound quality via the bluetooth and the call quality again is great and also with speakers and stuff the sound quality on this rom was amazing no issues whatsoever we have the dark theme then the screen recorder and stuff you can record the device audio and microphone audio at the same time also we have a lot more options and we have the always on display toggle option the night light nearby share heads up and the google home controls also we have this reboot toggle too and the sound toggle if you tap and hold on it you get the volume panel just like this and this is how the brightness slider looks like and you can tap on the edit button and you can edit and add multiple toggles if you want to but let me tell you i haven't seen the fps info toggle that might be missing for some reason over here also the widgets and stuff in the home screen is working perfectly fine as you can see this is the clock widget it is actually working perfectly fine if you're noticing the animations and stuff they look beautiful also let me show you the stock camera now anx camera version 204 right out of the box the 2x zoom is also working fine the ultra wide angle lens is working fine i have tested all of these the front camera works great and the portrait pictures also works great even with the rear camera too the portrait pictures also works great i have seen the 64 megapixel camera also works great but there is a bug so i just took this picture casually let me actually show you the information of it so as you can see this is a proper 64 megapixel photo 22 mb in size and yes this is a 64 megapixel photo no problems with that normally 64 megapixel photos are working perfectly fine there is no sunlight in this photo this is actually a cloudy day kind of photo so yeah if your photo does not have the sunlight in it it will be perfectly fine but this picture i have taken with the 64 megapixel mode too do you notice any difference in quality and stuff not really it doesn't look too bad but let me actually show you the information of it this is a 0.7 megapixel photo that just sucks and the size is about 122 kb so this is less than one megapixel photo when you like have the sunlight or something in focus which is like very very bright then the 64 megapixel photo comes out to be totally not worth it and as you can see it actually becomes 0.7 megapixel so this is the bug with the 64 megapixel camera other than this one i haven't seen any other bugs with this kind of like anx camera as you can see in the video mode we have up to 4k 30 fps and that is actually perfectly working fine even the super macro mode is actually working if you're noticing those screens and stuff so yeah everything is working perfectly fine and even with the front camera let me show you you can take 1080p 30 fps videos with it also you can take pro video option is also there as you can see you can have the pro video option also there is the 4k 30 fps option even the log option and stuffs are there but let me tell you the camera experience overall is great if you don't take too much 64 megapixel photos you will be fine even the vlog mode should be working fine and the dual video mode is actually also working fine as you are noticing so yeah no issues whatsoever with these modes but i have seen the slow motion may not be working let me actually show you the slow motion as you can see it gets stuck so this is how the situation is right now only the slow motion and the 64 megapixel mode option is buggy other than that the anx camera is working perfectly fine or 100 percent of the time it is working fine so i have had no issues whatsoever with the anx camera personally but if you are someone who takes a lot of 64 megapixel photos then it will be a problematic thing for you but otherwise the anx camera is there right out of the box let me talk about the version differences well the oss vendor based version i have used in the past the oss vendor based version of the interface rom will be a lot smoother in the like day-to-day -day experience like look at this i mean right now it looks fine but when you have a lot of apps opened i would say in the miui vendor based version i have seen some sluggishness 
in the UI, it is not as fast as the OSS vendor based version. That's what I feel. But otherwise, for daily driving, it was performing okay ish, I would say. Yes, there are a couple of like lags and stutters here and there in the UI, but otherwise, it was completely fine, I would say. It did not force reboot on me or something. So, yeah, the experience was overall good. Now, there is the dirt space, and there are a huge amount of customizations. And as you can see, it just doesn't end. Amazing amount of customizations are there. You can customize pretty much everything out of there. A lot of things are there, mic privacy, etc., brightness control, etc., for the MISC settings. In the battery settings too, we have a lot of like battery icon styles and stuff. Even the big dotted circle and stuff is there, including with the right left battery icons. So the customization, I, if I show you, it will take a lot of time. Yes, you can also see the customizations of this ROM too which is pretty similar with the OSS vendor based version. I'll link that in the video description. Don't worry, you can see those customizations. But here also the monitor theme engine and stuff, all those things in the general settings, unlimited Google Photos, then the charging animation, alert slider notification, burn in protection, everything is there in the customization section. So a huge amount of customizations you will get over here. Now let's talk about the battery. In the battery settings, you will get this kind of battery percentage. It is pretty bold as Android 12 this is. And we have the thermal profiles too right here. So you can choose for apps thermal profiles to the like performance or benchmark or gaming or something like that as you can see from right here so you can choose for apps thermal profile that is great also talking about the battery usage i have tested it with the aku battery app i have got about 9 hours or 55 minutes of screen on time here it shows so that is just insanely good i would say so this is a amazing amount of screen on time so you will get pretty much 8 plus hours of screen on time with even heavy usage here so you shouldn't worry about the battery life also the fast charging works great here the 33 watt fast charger has been working super fine for me and if you put your phone in standby it will last about 41 hours here it shows and for combined or average use it shows about 18 hours of usage so yeah for a full charge it can last definitely for more than one day if you are a normal user in terms of battery health it actually shows me i have about 91 percent battery health left so yeah this is a new device so definitely the battery health has been good so no issues with the battery life over here overall my battery life experience with the dwarf is from has been great no issues whatsoever also we have the battery saver the adaptive battery also there is the idle drain manager if you if your device is consuming even more battery you can just like turn this on but it will like close any kind of background application that you are running once you enable this option let me go back to the sound settings and here we have the link ring notification vibration options and we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option and stuff then we have the charging sound charging vibration touch sound touch screenshot sound etc options also we have the me audio direct right now it's force closing for some reason but yeah it does work as you can see right now we are in it and we have the youth edition and stuff right here and a lot more headset options the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well and we have the preset choosing option too and we have the hi-fi audio option too so yeah a lot of options regarding sound and sound quality overall has been really amazing in the display settings we have the brightness level the adaptive or auto brightness we also have this extra dim feature and you can even change the intensity of it if you like that and we have the live display option and the color calibrations and stuff red green blue etc you can customize then we have the lock screen and here we have the always show time and info and other things wake screen for notification and stuff and the double tap to sleep on lock screen etc and we have the screen timeout you can have the screen attention option to enabled then we have the dark theme and for the dark theme as you can see once you enable it let me actually show you the dark theme this is how it looks like everything becomes dark whatever was white it becomes dark so it looks beautiful let me just disable that for the time being and we have the display width and the night light and stuff customization then the smooth display or 120 hertz display is there and it is actually working fine right now as you can see it shows 120 right there and here we have the prevent accidental wake up or the pocket detection option and the wake up on plug option is there if you want to enable that you can and we have the full screen apps you can force some particular apps to full screen then we have the wallpapers and styles and the wallpaper is this one i am using this is from the wallp app i'll list it below in the description and the dark theme again is there the themed icons you can enable from right here and we have the app grid changing option up to six by six and we have the system icon packs from here you can change the system icon packs to whatever you like inside security we have this pin lock option and in the settings of course we get the quick unlock then the lock after timeout but there is no face unlock option over here but you do get that app lock option from the launcher and we have the auto re reboot option so you can choose if you want to auto reboot your device after 72 hours or something so you can do that now let's talk about some key things 
of a particular ROM. Let me actually show you the safety net here passes right out of the box. So that is just amazing. You can use banking apps over here without even flashing Magisk or something or without even using Magisk Guide. And Magisk I feel is still buggy on Android 12. That's why I won't recommend you guys flashing Magisk on uh, Android 12 ROM. So this is great that on this dot face ROM, the safety net passes right out of the box. So you can use any banking app out there. You shouldn't be having any issues. I have been using banking apps on this ROM. No issues that I have faced. And with this IR Bluster remote app, let me actually show you the IR Bluster is working perfectly fine here. If you are noticing right there. So yeah, IR Bluster works great. I haven't seen any such issues with the IR Bluster. The DRM info shows as L1 over here as you are noticing. So you shouldn't be having any issues while streaming Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p on this ROM. Now talking about the performance while daily driving, yes, I have seen some of the glitches here and there in the UI. But other than that, I haven't seen any major issues with the performance. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular ROM. The stock dialer here is the Google dialer, but it also comes with the recording option. Let me actually show you right there. We get the record option. So yeah, this is great that the Google or Pixel dialer has the recording option on this particular ROM and that's just great. And once you are in a video call or something, there is a black border on the front camera. So you shouldn't worry about any camera halo glow or something. Overall, I can totally recommend this ROM to someone who wants to switch to a custom ROM and they want to have the ANX camera built in. Or if you don't need the slow motion to be working in the ANX camera, then I can definitely recommend you this ROM. You get the best of like every world as you can see out there. We have the Gcam Go working too. This is a Gcam Go camera I have installed separately. And you can also install other Gcams too over here. So the Gcams and the ANX camera both you get over here. So you shouldn't be worrying about the like camera performance over here at all. So this ROM definitely gets a thumbs up from me. And I have been daily driving this ROM almost more than 20 days and that just says a lot of things about this ROM in my frank opinion. I change ROMs almost like every two to three days. But here I have been enjoying using this ROM. Let me in the comments what do you guys think. Please share this video with your friends if they want to know about the Dirtfist MIUI vendor based version. How is the experience overall? So they can figure out if they want to flash this ROM or not. Thank you so much for watching this video again. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDNDX signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.